Brett, Ash, and Captain Dallas are dead. Cargo and ship destroyed. I should reach the frontier in about six weeks. Hello and welcome to the Refundables for a new episode this week with your hosts, Punch and Peppy. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, Peppy's here. I am Peppy. Hello. We're doing some game reviewing. <coughs> I still got that cancer cough. I'm going to have it for another like a few months. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We're reviewing... Send this man a GF to take care of him. You can be a GF male. Uh, we're, we're, we're reviewing Deep Sky Derelicts. Which is an RPG strategy card game. I got it written down. It's a roguelike turn-based card game. Reminiscent of old school dungeon crawler crawlers, but it's in space instead. I didn't actually know it was roguelike. Let's do the story first. What story? But um, <laughs> and we're done with the story. Okay, gameplay. <laughs> the story is like uh, it's pretty bare bones, right? You're a space mercenary. You've been hired by the space empire to look for a lost relic. Find the information. Find the coordinates and the secret hints that will bring you to this infernal station. That's that's the entire story. It's like, go and fetch the data so we can find the thing. It's a go explore the level, then bring me the thing from the level, then go explore the other level. And there's some optional quests in between. That's pretty much like the story, I guess. So... The art style is pretty cool. It's drawn like a comic book. And they also, they say, oh, it's an interactive comic book or something like that. You shouldn't be marketing it that way, but okay. Yeah. No, you shouldn't be marketing it that way. But the art style is very comic book-like. Yeah. You have uh, comic panels often during parts. But a problem I had as well was that the interface isn't very consistent. Like most of it is properly stylized to feel like comic book art, but then random buttons are just, they don't fit in with the rest of the style. The walking around, you just get a grid of squares and the more squares you explore, the more you'll find until you have explored the whole area that's available. But it's a really dull experience. It's like playing Minesweeper. Yeah, it's but like playing Minesweeper. No, no, <laughs> calm down. It's never the first one. No, ticking until it reaches nine, nine, nine. What happens then? Nothing. You just suck. Maybe some story, like spread some like story stuff, some some random NPCs, some like more searching for items, I guess. Because that's fun when you find some trash item. It would have been better without the grid system. You know, in point and click where you just, the area you're in on your screen and there's arrows left and right, or you click on a doorway to go on the next area, that would have not been hard to do here. And I think would have been a lot better than the grid system of movement. A bit like Darkest Dungeon or something, you know, like, yeah, like you don't move through the map by clicking on the map, you move to by moving your characters around. Yeah, exactly. I think that would have been better. Yeah, I agree. It feels really unnatural to just... It's literally just squares beca- lighting up. <laughs> There's not even like a small like representation of your party or something. Like, Give us some more player feedback than a fucking grid. <laughs> yeah. There's some neat stuff. There's some puzzles. I like them. There's some logic puzzles. If you're a retard, you might have issues with the logic puzzles. I enjoy the gameplay. It's a really niche game, I think. It's... It's a very niche game, just by merit of what it's trying to do. So the core game is you have a team of fellow space mercenaries, and basically you go around to new stations, and you have to click on a little map to explore tiles, and each tile can have different things, although most of them are empty. And you have X amount of moves to explore the tiles, and you have things that can boost the amount of moves you have before you have to return to the station and refill on life support juice. Life juices. Yeah, come before you have to fill it back up on cum. <laughs> and, uh, That's right. you know, along the way, there's deep Pokemon grass random encounters with units, and it's all turn-based to combat. But all your abilities and skills and actions are based on cards. And the cards are based on the equipment you have. 
different equipment will give you different cards that you can draw to attack with. Yeah, it's also dependent on, like, you have a few skills that are from your character class. Because you have six classes, I have them written down. Like, for instance, you can get different headgear, which will give you the ability to see weaknesses of your enemies better. So, for instance, you'll grab those goggles and then you'll use him as a debuffer. So you can debuff the enemy team. And for instance, give him grenades that stun or something. So you have like a, a debuffer guy. And then one guy, you focus on damage. And you have weapon types. You have melee weapon. Every character has a melee weapon slot and a ranged weapon slot. Some of them do. Some of them don't. But yeah, Bruiser only has a heavy weapon. Yeah, all characters have two weapon slots unless they use a heavy weapon. In which case, they only have one weapon slot. Yeah. And there's varying types of ranged weapons. Like there's snipers... There's uh, explosive weapons, there's, you know, assault rifles, there's submachine guns, you know, the standard variety. And all of them have unique mods that can only apply to your weapon type, which will change the cards that that weapon will give you. And this way, you influence which cards you can draw, which gives you, like, your tactics for in the battle. And even sometimes you'd be carrying a lesser weapon, less powerful weapon, because it has better cards. Okay, whenever you fire with this weapon, you have a chance to, you know, set him on fire or whatever. Now, from all of this, dear <laughs> listener, you might think, wow, isn't the system incredibly confusing? Yes. And <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> this is not a game for the weak of heart. It's very in-depth in how far you can go with the tactics and deck building. Now, luckily, while you're editing all these things, you can see your deck at the bottom of the screen. And then it's a, it has like words like rupture, spread, and then you're like, what is that? And then you click on the menu and there's like codex, and then you click on the codex and there's like 700 words. This is what, what rupture does. This is what... <laughs> Even the combat interactions with like um, NPCs, which you encounter on the ships, there's like different factions, which isn't explained to you at all. Maybe have faction NPCs, maybe have... Faction quests. Well, you do. You just don't know. <laughs> what we can say is that it's not a very intuitive game. There's a lot of things you have to find out for yourself because it doesn't explain very much. And not in the good way. Bare bones, get started and you'll, you'll find out. There's a lot of things you won't naturally find out without actively going. You know why it's the them, way it is? Which I think is a harsh. massive weak point. It's consistent in its... Uh, inaccessibility <laughs> like it's like from the start like you get there's too much information when you look at the fucking leveling system and the weapon system you're like who the fuck designed this this is great 10 types of weapons each has a different play style then you have like you have a mental hat you know like you said you have shield boosting equipment you have like healing equipment you have uh, utility equipment, you have drone equipment, you can make drones in the battlefield. Then you have the leveling stuff, and it's deep. It's like, okay, you have six classes at the start, but then you have another about like 10 subclasses or something, like eight you can choose from. Or you can not choose. If you yeah. want, you can just go go to the tree to the top without choosing a subclass. And then you're like, what the? You put so much shit in here, and then you go back to the base, and you're like, okay. I can go heal. I can go to the shop, that's the one shop that's restocked. I can go to the cantina, which doesn't have anything 99% of the time. No, what like, you're um, is there's basically soul. no flavor. <laughs> Oi, this is what we make you play. The game whoop is this. Grind. We won't change anything Finish except, game. like, the monsters are different sometimes. Play it over and over again, and that's it. We don't have anything. Yeah, and that paints a stark contrast between the really high quality of the combat interactions Maybe have, and such, and then kind of the rest of the game, really. You're putting an RPG, just fucking add that shit in. It's like the opposite problem of many other indie games, where it's too much flavor, not enough gameplay. This is like way too much gameplay, and then no flavor at all. Like there's no world building. Every every NPC is like 
hey, I am the boss guy. You give me the quest. I give you the next quest. Hey, I am bar person. I give you side quest. Hey, I am buy and sell guy. I sell and buy thing. Uh, you can find like data pods that tell you what happened. I've never read <laughs> one of them. I've got like 12 hours in the game. After three levels, give me a fucking cinematic. Uh, what am I, reading a comic book? Fuck off. Like, give me a cinematic <laughs> in, the, in the comic book style that you've clearly shown. It, and I, I love the, the, the gameplay. It's fantastic. I love the gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay loop is so good that it almost carries the game. If you enjoy games, like, um, I'm going to say games we haven't reviewed yet, but Slay the Spire is a good example. If you enjoy Slay the Spire, you're going to enjoy this game. If you enjoy Darkest Dungeon, you're probably going to enjoy the game. Like, they shouldn't have gone the, like, hey, this is this comic book cool shit. Peppy, what's your verdict? I'd say I wouldn't refund it because I'm an autistic human. I think it's a good game mechanically. If you enjoy Slade Aspire, maybe give it a look. For oh, everybody else, wait until it's $10 and then try it out. Well, uh, I'll go against Peppy with that one and say that I um, I did refund it. Understandable. And the reason I already is what I already highlighted. There's not enough flavor, and I think that anyone who looks at the game and expects something out of the cool setting they present in their marketing and stuff, as they claim, like, oh, cool sci-fi dystopian comic book interactive, that's not what you're going to get. It's purely a gameplay loop. That's all it is. That wasn't quite enough for me personally. I, 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 com I completely understand your position here. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully we'll bring you a nice, good episode next week.